question from uh, Chris Jose of Remate. Kinuwestyon ni Vice President Lenny Robredo ang desisyon ng NTC na ipasarang ABS-CBN sa gitna ng krisis dulot ng COVID-19. Umaasa si VP Lenny na mamumulat ang administrasyon sa panganib na dala ng pagsasara ng ABS-CBN habang patuloy daw po ang krisis na kinakarap ng bansa dahil sa COVID-19. Sabi po ni VP Lenny, bakit ito ginawa ngayon sa panahong humaharap tayo sa matinding krisis? Wala dapat puwang sa panggigipit umano at pansariling interes sa mga panahon kung kailan dapat nagtutulungan. Well, uh, talaga po yan lang po magagawa natin. No? Questionin ang desisyon ng NTC dahil sa ayon sa batas, it is a quasi-judicial body. Hindi po natin po pwedeng paghimasukan. Malaya naman po tayong questionin ng desisyon na yan, pero ultimately, tanging ang NTC lang ang po pwedeng magbigay ng desisyon at tanging mga hukuman lang ang po pwedeng bumaliktad sa desisyon na yan. Pero sa tingin ko po, dahil bukas naman po ang Kongreso, ang solusyon, kinakailangan hingi ng ABS-CBN ang kanyang prangkisa sa ating Kongreso. Fish ng CNN. Hi sir, magandang umaga po. Good sir, morning. Si Secretary Anyo po, binanggit niya po na after May 15, it's possible that some areas in Metro Manila will now be placed under GCQ. Napag-usapan na po ba sa IATF kung ano-ano po itong mga cities in Metro Manila na ilalagay po sa GCQ? And ano po yung magiging parameters kung, at least for Metro Manila since epicenter po tayo, kung alin lugar yung mga ilalagay under GCQ po? Well, Ang, ang, ang guidelines po niyan ay hindi po nagbabago. No? Yung bilis ng pagkalat ng sakit, yung availability mm -hmm. ng critical care, at ang mabuting balita naman po dun sa last press conference ni Dr. Wong, no? na linabas niya yung observasyon, observasyon na kung dati-rate ang uh, paglaganap uh, ng sakit, sakit ay dumodoble every 2 to 3 days, ngayon po uh, dumodoble siya every 5 to 6 days sa Metro mm -hmm. Manila at pagdating sa probinsya ay 7 days pa. At sinabi rin ni Dr. Wong na meron pa tayong excess capacity pagdating sa mga ventilators at pagdating po sa ating critical care bed capacity. So ma malamang ito po yung mga basihan sa deklarasyon ni Secretary Anyo na posible ng uh, bumalik o magkaroon ng GCQ ang Metro Manila pero hindi lang po ako sigurado kung ito ay magiging uh, para sa buong Metro Manila dahil sa iba't ibang mga Siyudad po ay eh, patuloy pa rin po yung pagdoble ng sakit every 2 to 3 days. Alam ko po sa aking siyudad na Quezon City ay eh, mabilis pa rin po ang pagkalat ng sakit. Mm -hmm. So sir, most likely chosen cities lang. And at the same time sir, ito po uh, may, may report po na nagbabanggit na yung waiting time daw po sa MRT, posibleng umabot na ng 2 to 3 hours. Um, ano po yung pwedeng maging action ng Malacanang or IATF about this? Will you be asking uh, specific agencies like MMDA, DOTR, DOTR to provide transportation, sir? And at the same time, sir, kung dadami naman yung mga sasakyan sa kalsada, hindi po ba mas lalala naman po yung traffic? Well, kaya nga po may imumungkahi ako mismong personal no, sa IATF, pero hayaan nyo munang imung imungkahi ko muna sa susunod na pagpupulong ng IATF. Pero tama po kayo, dahil nga po kinakailang mag-social distancing, kung ngayon, eh, 30 minuto yung pag-antay sa MRT, eh talagang lalo pa pong hahaba yung pag-antay na yan kung hindi natin pupunuin ang mga MRT at LRT. Sasabihin ko po sa inyo mm -hmm. kung nagawa ko na yung aking mungkahi. Mm -hmm. Secretary, doon naman po sa issue ng ABS-CBN franchise, uh, many law experts are saying that this is now beyond legal questions, legal matters, and it's become more political in nature. That's one, sir. And at the same time, sir, kung halimbawa, strip off natin or isentabi natin lahat po ng technicality surrounding the uh, franchise and looking at the people na maaapektuhan po. For example, may mga nagtatanong po na empleyado, paano na yung mangyayari sa trabaho nila sa mga susunod na buwan, Probably, sir, yung mga anak could also be wondering if they could still enroll sa kanilang mga paaralan, paano yung mga breadwinner na doon umaasa, yung mga talents na umaasa lang po sa, uh, na umaasa po sa kada shoot. Uh, kung titignan po ito ni President, uh, ni Presidente Duterte, kasi alam po natin na he has a very strong political will, and at the same time, kilala rin po siya ng administration na someone na malapit yung puso sa mahihirap. How, in what way, can we possibly expect the president uh, to exhibit political will in this situation? And sir, tanong ko na rin po, kung halimbawa, since the ball is in the Congress right now, kung halimbawa, sir, na umabot na sa table ni Presidente, will he sign it or will he uh, just allow it to lapse or veto it, sir? 
Una-una, sagutin natin yung uh, issue sa mga manggagawa dahil sila pinaka-apektado rito, yung 11,000 na manggagawa. No? Uh, Lininaw na po ni Secretary Bellio ng Dole na hindi naman po ibig sabihin wala na silang empl employment palibasa nagkaroon ng cease and desist order. Empleyado pa rin po sila. Kinakailahan swelduhin pa rin sila despite the cease and desist order. Pangalawa po, yung usaping political, eh, well, kung, kung usaping political naman po, eh, ginawa na ni Presidente ang kaya niya magagawa. Uh, sinabihin na po niya ang kanyang mga aliado, neutral po siya dyan sa issue ng ABS-CBN. Kung dati-rate, alam nilang nagalit si Presidente, nakita naman ng lahat. Tinanggap na ng Presidente yung patawad ng ABS-CBN. Wala na pong ibang magagawa ang Presidente, kundi sabihin nga sa kanyang mga aliado sa Kongreso, bumoto kayo sa ayon sa inyong mga konsyensya. Pangatlo po, um, wala naman po talaga magagawa sa ngayon ng Presidente. Gustuhin man niyang bigyan ng prangkisa, sa saligang batas po, talagang Kongreso na magbibigay ng prangkisa. Ang usapin lang po ay kung po pwede bang paghimasuka ng Presidente ang National Telecommunication Commission. Well, eto po, pinabuti ko na na i-flash sa ating screen yung kauna-unahang uh, batas, no? Um, yung ating kauna-unahang batas na bumuo nung dating Ministry of Public Works and Ministry of Transportation and Communications kung saan unang nailagay po ang uh, ang NTC sa ilalim ng Ministry of Transportation and Communication. Makikita nyo po dito sa Section 16. Sana po nakikita nyo ngayon sa screen ninyo. No? Um, sa Section 16, nakasulat po dyan no, na um, yung National Telecommunications Commission ay nasa ilalim po ng control and supervision ng, Dep ng Ministry of Transportation and Communication except with respect to its quasi-judicial functions. Ito pong dahilan kung bakit lahat nga ng desisyon ng NTC sa hukuman ho dinadala, hindi po sa Office of the President. Itong quasi-judicial function po niya, hindi po ito na bago sa mga ibang batas pa na um, isinabatas. No? Um, palagi pong nasa ilalim ng uh, either Department of um, um, Transportation and Communication at ngayon po di ICT, ang NTC, pero hindi po nagbabago na quasi-judicial po siya. Kung ang presidente po ay uh, maghihimasok, it is a form of graft po because hindi po po pwedeng iniimpluensyahan ng uh, kahit sino man ang desisyon ng mga quasi-judicial at judicial bodies. Rocky? Pero sir, for example, po, magawa po nila na, ng Congress na matapos po yung bill at ipasan in for signing na po ni President. Will he, can we expect the President to sign it? Unless there is any constitutional infirmity, I don't think the President is inclined to veto it. Sinabing na nga po ng Presidente, neutral ako dyan. Gawin nyo na ang katungkulan ninyo, bumoto sa, ngayon sa inyong mga konsyensya. Joyce Balancho? Yes, good afternoon, Secretary. Just a follow-up question na po sa question ni Trish on uh, mga sinabi ni Secretary Anyo. Uh, pwede po ba natin sabihin na yun na po yung magiging direction natin at least pagdating sa NCR? Because he mentioned specific cities na okay naman po yung development. Like for example, yung San Juan and Palenzuela. Uh, posible daw na isa ilalim sila sa GCQ. Ito na po ba yung magiging direction natin? Is the IATF now looking into specific cities sa NCR for GCQ after May 15? Well, kung hindi po magbabago ang datos no, na nagpapakita ngayon na bumabagal na yung pagkalat at uh, meron pa tayong kapasidad magbigay ng critical care, eh, siguro po yan ang direksyon. Kaya nga po ang pakiusap ko sa mga nalalabing araw, konting tulog na lang naman po ito, manatili po sa ating mga tahanan ang hindi po mahirapang magbigay ng desisyon ang IATF na baguhin ng ECQ, lalo na sa Metro Manila. When can we expect the IATF po to release uh, the list of cities in NCR na isa sa ilalim po sa GCQ? Well, um, the ECQ will end on May 15, so I suppose it will be a few days before May 15 dahil kinakailangan mag-transition din tayo to GCQ no? para dun sa mga areas na po pwede na mag-GCQ. Ganyan naman din po ang ginawa natin bago matapos yung uh, original e ECQ nung at 30 na Abril. Update lang po, Secretary, you mentioned before that there are at least seven other places or provinces also requesting uh, for them to be placed under ECQ. May update na po ba ang IETF if these were denied or approved? Wala pa po. It's, it, it's matters to be taken up in the next meeting. If I'm not mistaken, the next meeting is on tom uh, tomorrow, Friday. So, nandun po tayo. Mm -hmm. On ABS-CBN lang, sir, um, does, does the palace think that the Congress is at par with its job of, you know, really representing the people who elected them because I'm asking this, sir, because there are a lot of statements of support for ABS-CBN pouring in at this time 
uh, coming from different organizations, press corps, groups, and even you know ordinary citizens. If you just look at uh, social media, you will see a lot of uh, statements of support calling for the renewal of the franchise of the network. Sir, should Congress not ignore these statements if they really want to prove that they are staying true to their oath, that they will be, they will be serving only the interests of the people who elected them? I think that's a matter that is uh, better left to be answered by Congress. No? But um, having been myself a part of the uh, House of Representatives, ang masasabi ko lang po at ang presidente rin natin ay naging uh, kongresista rin, hindi naman po bulag, hindi naman bingi ang inyong mga representante sa hinaing ng mga taong bayan. Should they Rocky? not ignore? Okay. Sir? Ano? Should they... Should they not ignore well, these statements ko na po yan. of support? Sa aking eksperyensya po at ang eksperyensya rin ng ating presidente nung kami po ay parehong uh, nasa kongreso, hindi naman po nagbubulag-bugalagan, hindi nagbibigibingihan ang mga congressman sa hinaing ng kanilang constituents. Thank you, sir. Rocky? Rocky? Yes, Rocky. Okay, a question from uh, Belia Cariaso, Secretary. Tatlo po yung question niya. A reaction po sa si statement ni Bishop Broderick Papilio, Apostolic Administration ng Archdiocese of Manila sa pagsasara ng ABS-CBN. Sabi niya, the specter of martial law is coming up. This action of the government is not uniting the people. In fact, it is using the pandemic as a cover for its dastardly deed. Rinirespeto po natin ang desisyon ni uh, Bishop, pero ang katotohanan po, bukas po ang Kongreso, bukas po ang ating Supreme Court at ating ibang mga um, hukuman, um, bukas po ang mga media outlets bukod lang po sa ABS-CBN dahil nawalan nga siya ng prangkisa. So sa tingin ko po, malayang malayo tayo sa sitwasyon ng Marcia Doon noong 1972. Ang, ang second question niya, even uh, Foreign Affairs Secretary Teddy Boy Luxon Jr. reacted on the shutdown of ABS-CBN saying it's a shame for the National Telecommunications Commission and the House of Representatives. Ano po ang masasabi ng palasyo dito na maging opisyal ng gobyerno na naniniwalang kahihiyan umano sa NTC at Kamara ang ginawa sa ABS-CBN? Wala naman po kaming reaksyon dahil yan po ay personal na opinion ni Secretary Luxin. Um, we leave it at that. May mga residente daw po sa Barangay Talipa pa, particular sa Villa Sabina Subdivision, ang nagre-reklamo na hindi man lang sila nabigyan ng SAP form. Ngayon, uh, ngayon ang distribution ng 8,000 na ayuda sa Barangay Talipa pa, pero wala pa daw pong nag-iikot para mamigay ng form sa SAP. Ano po ang payo nyo sa kanila? Tumatawag daw po sila at nagte-text sa hotline ng Barangay, pero wala naman daw pong response. Siguro dumiretso na po kayo sa DILG, no? Ki Undersecretary Dino dahil siya po ang uh, Undersecretary for Barangay Affairs. Para tingin po kay uh, Undersecretary Dino, yun yung reklamo. Si Joseph Morong, please. Hi, Joseph. Mr. Last Question. Naku, namimiss ko na yung last question. Nasaan na? O sige, balik muna tayo kay Yusek Rami. O, ayun, ayun. Okay na. Ayan. Ayan. Yes, sir. Uh, Nakamute yung phone ko. Anyway, sir, um, sa backlog, ilan po yung backlog natin? Sa backlog sa SAP, ang huling ulat po ng DSWD. Hindi, sir, sa testing. Ah, well, hindi ko po alam kung magkano backlog. Ang alam ko lang, eh, yung magkano na yung na-test natin, as of last time, yung last press briefing natin, 121,000 individuals at kundi ko nagkakamali, around 120... 124,000 tests or something like that. No? So malaki po, ang backlog na ina, ang hinihingi nyo, yung mga inaantay na mga resulta sa PCR, wala po akong Perfect. ganyang datos, bagamat alam ko talaga, may katagalan po dahil 3 to 4 days uh, inaabot ang resulta. Kapingo na lang sir, yung backlog sa SAP, since you mentioned it. Sa SAP po, 75% na po ang naibigay sa taong bayan. No? So sa original na first tranche po, 25% na lang, nagkaroon po ng uh, extension ng deadline ng uh, DILG at uh, um, sabi ng DILG, parang, parang last question muna talaga yan. Hindi na talaga po pwede magkaroon ng further extension. <laughs> Beyond, yan yung May 10, 10. sir. No? Uh, May 10, yes. Okay, sir. Balik po ako doon sa backlog. So, sir, kahapon kasi si, si Yusek Verhere, no? uh, merong data na yung sa Bulacan, 400 yun na test na hindi pa na kikita kung positive or hindi. 
Meaning to say, sir, yung pinipresent natin ng data and even the DOH data, no, hindi po yan real-time, no? Hindi po. In fact, kaya nga po may pinag-aaralang proposal ngayon na kapag lumabas na yung resulta ng mga PCR tests, i-record siya as of the time kinuha yung swab. Kasi kapag i-record mo yan, as soon as uh, the, the results come out, biglang nag spike yung cases, hindi masyado accurate. No? So, may ganyang proposal po. Okay. So, sir, ibig sabihin, um, hindi kita yung totoong picture and therefore, ito ba dapat ang maging basehan ng ating decision whether to lift yung ECQ sa Metro Manila? I wouldn't say it's completely 100% accurate but it's fairly accurate at this point. Lalo na po ngayon na uh, lalo natin na uh, pinapalakas yung ating testing capacity no with the opening of the four mega swabbing centers no at saka with the increase of our um, PCR testing centers at bukod pa ito dun sa programa ng pribadong sektor yung Project Arc no na napakadami rin po nila nakikitang mga positive dahil importante na sa puntong ito we are at the verge of uh, at least trying to restart the economy e eh, ma-locate ma-isolate at ma-cure yung mga misakit na magagawa lang natin through mass testing. So, sir, should this be a basis yung pong nilalabas na data ng DOH for a decision whether to lift the ECQ in Metro Manila? I think it's a good because basis. This is not the real picture. I think it's a good basis because number one, lalo nga po nag-i-increase yung ating testing capacity. So as we um, come closer to May 15, we would have a better picture. Ang importante po, number of uh, um, respirators, number of critical bear, care beds, at saka number of um, um, wihilas one centers no? kung saan natin po pwedeng mailagay yung mga hindi na kinakailangan ng mga hospital na positibo sa COVID-19. Sir, ganito. Sa umulan na kahapon, no? at uh, alam naman natin na yung June is the onset of the flu season. So may nag-point out lang po sa Facebook no? na parang kung halimbawa, come June, no? magkaroon ng sakit, ng sabo, sipon yung mga tao, will we be treating them instantly as COVID cases? So paano natin ititreat yung gano'n ng mga ailments na normal during those period, but in the context of our present situation where we have COVID? Paano yun, sir? Well, all I can say, Joseph, is we're aiming to reach 30,000 per day of PCR testing. No? Para nga, mas, malak mas mabuti ang ating uh, gauge kung gano'ng kadami na yung misakit. At uh, as we increase our capacity to test, we're also increasing our capacity to locate, to isolate, and cure those with COVID-19. Meaning, sir, if you have the 30,000 tests, more or less, by that time, nahiwalay na natin yung mga may COVID. And therefore, those of you will see, Eh, baka ordinary na sakit. Tama ba yan? Yes. Uh, in fact, that's 30,000 is PCR test. Kailangan bilangin din natin uh -oh. yung rapid test na gagawin natin. No? Um, and um, although the government target is 2.2, the private sector target is in excess of 1 million already. No? Kasi yung mga nag i alam nila na para ma-restart ang kanilang mga negosyo, kinakailangan ma-test din yung kanilang mga empleyado. Okay. okay, sir, last na lang. So, Ayan na naman, ha? <laughs> um, initially, uh -oh. we, no, no, initially, we thought it's going to be after COVID. Even uh, Senator Goh said maybe after COVID. But right now, pinapaandar nyo na pala yan. Well, alam nyo po kasi habang... Habang mahirap ang buhay sa Metro Manila, marami talagang gustong umuwi na sa kanilang mga probinsya. So ginagawa naman po ng paraan no, na yung talagang iba na nais nang bumalik sa kanilang mga probinsya ay makabalik na. No? So ito naman po ay panimula pa lamang. Kinakailangan mag-comply pa rin sa mga quarantine protocols dahil ayaw naman nating kumalat ang COVID sa mga probinsya. You mentioned two provinces, Leyte and Camarines ba yun? Paano yung procedure, sir? sir? Sino sasabihan nila na gusto ko nang umuwi? Ay, ayan nga po. Uh, ang sekretariat po ay NHA. Um, si GM po ang ating uh, kumbaga, um, chief enforcer nito. Ang mga bus ay will be provided by DOTR and the coordination will be done by DIRG. And of course, Department of Health will also contribute dahil kinakailangan masunod yung testing protocols bago sila makauwi. So, NHC sa lang papaalam, sir? Apo. Uh, okay, sir. Thank you for that. DILG. Ayan. Rocky? Yung sa Rocky. Okay. Sino yan? Sige. Habang wala pa si Yusek Rocky, si Mr. Wang Zheng Zheng ng CCTV. Mag-i-English tayo dito kasi hindi ito nananagalog. Okay. Hello, Wang. Um, 
I would like to focus on the ECQ issue. I would like to know uh, if we would like to lift the ECQ, do we have any kind of uh, indicates to, to uh, help us to determine uh, we can do so or not? Like, let's see if we have any kind of uh, indicates like uh, uh, how many days we have a continuously uh, decrease of the con confirmed cases or something like that. We've actually approved in the IATF um, a decision-making um, guide no, on when to actually lift the ECQ and um, impose GCQ. The most important factors, as I said earlier, is the um, speed by which the disease is being transmitted. And I have made the observation that in the past, it was two to three days, uh, the cases would double in Metro Manila. But we now have better indicators that it is now doubling at the rate of five to six. Uh, days in within Metro Manila, but outside of Metro Manila, it now takes seven days for the disease to double more or less. So this is pretty much a good indicator that the uh, um, ECQ has been working. No? But in addition to that, we look at critical care capacity, we look at ventilators, we look at ICU beds, and we look at the total beds available for those who need to be isolated. So, uh, because right now we have the mega swabbing center already, and uh, under this situation, that means maybe our comfort number will will be uh, increased sharply. So, uh, how do we uh, handle this kind of situation if we have uh, more cases uh, before uh, at the end of May? Because I know uh, at the end of May we will have capacity to test the 30,000 individual per day. We anticipated, of course, the increase in the number of COVID cases until we have a vaccine or a cure, it will continue to increase. That is why we built, we healed us, we heal us one centers to serve as quarantine facilities because we know we cannot open the economy unless those afflicted with the disease can be um, um, located, isolated, and cured. Yeah, uh, thank you, Secretary. And also, I would like to know. Um, because uh, this morning uh, we have the report about uh, our GDP uh, contraction uh, for the uh, first quarter and uh, NEDA said it may be worse in the second quarter. So uh, you just mentioned like uh, we already have the guideline for the economic side, like people, how, how they work at the office, something like that. But uh, uh, the government has any plan to uh, recover the economic under this kind of new normal? Well, the good news for the Philippines is we have very sound economic fundamentals as evidenced by uh, um, very good uh, credit rating and a very strong peso. And that is why, despite the fact that we already impu impose EZQ in the month of March, basically half of the month of March, the economy contracted only by 0.02%. We expect, of course, the economy to um, shrink even more during the month of April um, because the whole month of April was basically under EZQ and the first two weeks of uh, May as well. No? So um, we definitely expect uh, a big contraction. But... Um, the uh, economic planners are very vigilant. We foresee a V-shape of um, economic re recovery. There will be a steep decline in the GDP for the second quarter, perhaps, but we expect a very strong rebound, courtesy of the Build, Build, Build program of the government. And um, number one, very prudent fiscal policy, as well as a prudent uh, monetary policy, which means we're using public spending as a tool for economic recovery, and we're also using money supply as a tool also for economic recovery. Thank you so much, Secretary. Yes, you said Rocky. Daming English no na, anyway. <laughs> Well, I'm going to use a Who is next? Melo. Melo, Cunha. Melo. Good afternoon, Secretary. Yeah, yeah go good ahead. afternoon. I hope you can hear me now. Yes. Yeah, I can hear can you loud. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good. Uh, maganda yung balita tungkol do sa balik probinsya. Walang problema yung uh, uuwi sa probinsya. Ang tanong ko lang muna, ano yung darat nan sa probinsya? Ano ang darat na nila sa probinsya? Well, alam niyo po, um, 
lahat naman yung mga lalong lalo yung mga probinsya na may GCQ eh medyo nagkaroon na po sila ng panahon no para magkaroon ng uh, economic activity. So mas buhay po yung mga nasa GCQ ngayon kaysa dito sa mga areas na nasa ECQ. So sa tingin ko po oh. ngayon mas maraming mga pagkakataon sa mga probinsya at alam nyo kasi dito sa ECQ naging karunasan natin talagang pagdating sa pagkain mas matinding problema dito sa mga siyudad gaagay ng Metro Manila kaysa sa probinsya. Ang probinsya palaging may gulay, no? Hindi sila nagugutom. Pero dito sa Manila talaga, kung walang ayuda, ay maras maraming nagugutom. So tingin ko po, alam din ng nagdanais na bumalik probinsya na mas uh, may oportunidad, oportunidad na tayo ngayon sa mga probinsya at lalong-lalo na doon sa pagdating sa pagkain, mas less likely silang magutom sa probinsya kaysa dito sa syudad. Ngayon po, sa tanong ko na, Uh, maliban sa contact tracing, gaano na po kalawak ang nagawa ng pamahalaan para maunawaan yung COVID-19? Sapagkat sa press briefing ni Governor Andrew Cuomo kagabi, binanggit niya na sa New York, nalaman nila na karamihan ng mga pasyente na napasok sa ospital ay hindi umalis ng bahay, hindi sumakay ng public transport. So maybe makakatulong ito para sa pag-unawa natin kung meron tayong angkop na pananaliksik sa mga pinagmulan ng ating mga COVID-19 positive cases. Melo, I, think I have to uh, defer to um, Yusek Vergere on that point because I'm not a doctor. No? I'm not an epidemiologist. Yeah. No? I can only speculate no, like you. So uh, please ask that of Yusek Vergere in her press con this afternoon. Okay. Ngayon po, ang Malaysia, nang huli sila ng mga migrants kamakailan. Uh, would you have any idea kung meron mga Pilipinong nadakip? Dahil sa, if I recall it right, si Mindanao Development uh, Authority Chair Manny Pinyol lumiham do sa Malaysian sa Sabah Governor na huwag munang ipatapon pabalik sa Pilipinas yung undocumented Filipinos. Would you have any idea kung kumusta yung ating undocumented Filipinos sa Sabah? Ngayon po, wala akong actual uh, information, but I will inquire, and on Monday, I will answer your question. Okay, Mello? Thank you very much. Okay. Have a nice day. Oh, Thank you. May mga questions po na pinabrating na lang sa atin si Yusek Rocky. Um, ano ba yung next question? Uh, okay. Ha? Number? Number three. Number three. With COVID-19 cases, question po ni Francis Wakefield ng Daily Tribune. With COVID-19 cases continuing to rise in the country, especially in Metro Manila, when can we expect the IATF make a decision on whether extend pang lockdown sa SCR or local ECQ na lang? Well, the ECQ is until May 15. On or before May 15, a decision will have to be made. Question from Julie Aurelio. Will returning OFWs and their children be separated or will they stay together during quarantine? Ang pulisiya po natin, pinagsasama po natin ang mga magulang at kanilang mga anak during quarantine. Can we have an estimate of how much manpower the government needs for the four mega swabbing facilities? How will the government maintain this manpower once the ECQ is lifted and work in the government private sector resumes and volunteers have to go to work? We need 1,500 spots. Dito sa mga mega, mega um, swabbing facilities neto. At um, ito po ay para sa mga swabbers, encoders, and barcoders. Lahat naman po sila ay uh, susweldohan ng ating gobyerno, kasama po ang hazard pay. No? Yung mga volunteers, meron din po silang bayad, at kung gusto na lang bumalik sa kanilang regular na trabaho, hahanap po tayo ng mga panibagong volunteers. From, ito, what are the quarantine procedures for pregnant OFWs? Are there ob specialists in the quarantine facilities and other specialists for other illnesses? Yes! Dinesignate po natin ang National Children's Hospital para dito sa mga buntis na OFWs. Lima na pong mga na-quarantine na OFW ng anak. Yung isa po, ang pangalan ay COVID Bryant. Question from Samuel Medenilia, Business Mirror. What is the reaction of the Palos on the contraction of GDP? Well, we hope, well... Of course, we regret it, but we're glad that it's a minimal con contraction given that nag-ECQ na po tayo ng first, last two weeks of March, which is part of the first quarter. With the impact of the COVID-19 closure to the economy during the second quarter, is the government expecting a recession? Ang recession po kasi three consecutive quarters of um, decline in the GDP. We're hoping po that pursuant to the V strategy, eh baka naman po umakit na by the time we hit um, the third quarter. We're hoping. Um, how does the government plan to boost the GDP? Already answered po. 
we're relying on government spending through the Build, Build, Build program, and we're, going, we're relying also on sound monetary policy. We're lowering, lowering interest rates, and we're asking banks to lower their um, um, hindi, hindi lang interest rate, eh. meron pa isa yung kanilang deposit so that more money will be available in the economy. Question from Jeneline Kabiling, Manila Bulletin. Would the President sign into law or veto? Uh, already answered po. Unless there's any further constitutional infirmity, I don't think he will veto. No? Pero depende po yan. Dahil speculative din yan, wala pa po yung bill or the law. No? Why has the President decided to keep a neutral stance on ABS-CBN? Why can't he openly declare his support for ABS-CBN, reopening to counter his previous stance against the network? Well, malino naman po yan. No? Independiente at co-equal branch of government ang uh, Kongreso. Ayaw naman niyang diktahan. It's enough that he has cleared the air. He is now neutral as far as the franchise of ABS-CBN is concerned. How will you address criticism the government prefers the reopening of POGOs over ABS-CBN that employs thousands of workers? Nako, hindi po apos to apos yan. Ang POGOs po, ang kinikita natin dyan, eh, 600 million a month in regulatory fees alone, no? 22 billion pesos a year in income, um, and um, 180 in withhold, withheld income tax alone. No? So, um, and of course, in terms of employment, 35,000 po ang Pilipino na nag employ dyan sa mga POGOs. Pero importante po yung kikitain natin sa POGO na mahigit isang bilyon um, kada buwan ay pupunta po lahat sa COVID-19. So, since there are no further questions, um, I'm sorry we lost contact with Yusek Rocky, but thank you very much, Yusek Rocky. And maraming salamat, Pilipinas. As usual, keep safe and healthy. Ako po inyong Spox, Harry Roque. Magandang tanghali po sa inyong lahat.